Hello and welcome to Off My Shelves and in this episode we're going to be looking at Black Sad, the complete hardback collections by Dark Horse Comics written by Juan Diaz Canales and Juan Ho Garanedo. Who knows if I'm pronouncing that right, but I give it a good go, so let's get into it. So for those who watched, uh, recently I did a massive collaborative video with loads of other amazing YouTubers uh, looking at our top five Dark Horse books. And if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link in the description below, definitely watch it. And it was really heartwarming and surprising to see this comic featured in a lot of people's lists. So I thought, you don't hear that much about this, or I would do a video on it, and so that's why it's here, really. Black Sad is an amazing comic, really, and these three hardbacks are collecting all of the story that's translated from Spanish into English and published by Dark Horse. Now, the three hardbacks have been collected in a trade paperback as well, but before we get too far into the details of it all, well, let's have a look at the build of these hardback books. So the first hardback, just entitled Black Sad collects actually three of the stories of Black Sad and John Black Sad being our main character. The build is really high quality on these books. They essentially have no dust jackets, they have sewn binding which is great. Obviously volume one is far far thicker than the other two volumes and that's mainly because the English translation of this was done at a point where they had three stories in the bank and so they published all three stories in this first hardback and then the other two hardbacks the build and size are exactly the same and the quality is exactly the same even though they thin they still sound binding and still really really high quality books but obviously the stories in here run for just over about 50 or 60 or so pages whereas the stories in here have three of those 50 or 60 page stories going through it. The size of them is great, they like the European album size, so um, at the same height as a deluxe edition really. So let's look at deluxe Wonder Woman, the same height as it, but obviously wider as well. The same width as a lot of the um, DC Black Label books that are coming out at the moment. And so to give you an indication of that, here is Wonder Woman Dead Earth, so the same width as that. So a European kind of album size format, if you want to call it that. But now to the story, and it's easier for me to just split these up into the story arcs, really, and tell you what each story arc is, quite lightly, without any spoilers at all. As I said, all of the stories are quite short in form. They're about 50 to 60 pages long, but they are dense with some of the best artistry you'll ever see in comics, and some amazing crime noir storytelling. It's set in an anthropomorphic world but our world is the history of this world essentially so it's post World War II it's in the 1950s or so it's really kind of classic film noir storytelling really and our main character is John Blacksad who is a cat obviously but he is an astonishingly cool calm character really hyper intelligent tough a proper private investigator from this era really. He's a proper hard-boiled PI in the America in the 1950s really. And it starts off, the first story arc is called Somewhere in the Shadows and that really gives you a lot of background into John Blacksad. You kind of discover the character in little snippets like he's discussed about how he served some time in Europe during World War II and these other little things and you find out about family members as you go through. The characterization of him very much evolves but he is very much a likeable character I think from right from the get-go but uh, somewhere in the shadow starts off with the murder of an old flame of his an actress and then that story kind of spirals into a much larger mystery and it brings in all these kind of you know studio chiefs from the 1950s heads of security all these other random people kind of coming into the fray and yeah it's just a fabulous read and a fabulous way to start the series but before I go too far into the story as well, the art certainly needs touching upon because the writing is exceptionally well done. It really is exceptional writing and I can't big that up enough. But what puts it into a real different tier is the high quality of art. I mean, the standard of artistry on show you is, is mind blowing and not just because of the detail that's in it. It is very detailed in its, in its style, but it's just the way it characterizes faces and body movements and scenes and the lighting that he uses and the use of watercolor because the artist 
actually watercolours and colours the panels himself as well and so it's really a labour of love on his part early on when you open this book up you you're, the opening pages are kind of using our watercolour and the inks on the page to really add lighting and mood and a lot of comic books don't use lighting in the same way that maybe a, a film shot would but this really does it really kind of uses that watercolour in lights and darks and does all manner of wonderful stuff with it it really is just an absolutely gorgeous book on every level and I don't think anyone in their right mind would really argue with that but as I touched upon slightly then the one thing I do adore is the characterization on the faces the way they express themselves all these anthropomorphic creatures and there really is just a such a massive range every animal imaginable is featured in here in some way in obviously an anthropomorphic humanized form but the characterization of them and the postures and the movement is just so well done. And a lot of the time the narration Black Sad is giving is one part of the story and then the art going on is a different part of the story. And that's, I love that about comic books when it does that. I love that it's using the text to almost tell a backstory and tell what's going on in a person's head. But then the picture is actually them moving and doing something in real life that you're not reading about. You have to read that through the image and I love comic books that do that. But yeah, Somewhere in the Shadows really lays down the foundation that Black Sad is a private investigator. He's out to solve this murder of an old flame and he gets into all manner of different problems and troubles. But it's certainly set in LA and one thing I really like about this series is the backdrop of the city or the area changes in every book. It doesn't stay set as an LA backdrop. So take for example the second story arc in book one, Arctic Nation. This is looking on a kind of race relations and white supremacy going on in post-war America. But it's looking at one of the suburbs, one of the downtrodden suburbs of LA. So it's away from the city and it's looking and the community on a smaller level but there's lots of killings going on there's lots of white supremacists hanging people of color and things like that and killing them and and the white supremacists kidnap a young girl and black Sad has been hired by a local school teacher to find and track this girl and again it's just so wonderfully done and it's very kind of reflective of the times in reality really you know the black panthers are in here in some way the neo kind of nazis and ku klux klan are kind of worked into it as well it's very much a snapshot of america and the high racial tensions going on but then obviously at the heart is looking for this lost girl the final story of the th of the three stories in the first hardback is called red soul it starts off with black sad in las vegas he's slightly down on his luck he needs some money so he took on a bodyguard role so he's looking after a, a, a wealthy man and being his bodyguard in Las Vegas and that really lays down the foundation with the nuclear testings in the far background in the Nevada desert and things like that but this wealthy entrepreneur is looking to purchase some artwork and in the procurement of this artwork Black Sad meets a friend Otto Lieber and he is a, he's similar in some ways there's some aspects of Einstein but there's also some aspects of many other characters from history as well in terms of his involvement in the creation of the atomic bomb but then equally Otto is kind of well, I can't really say too much about his story, but he does a lot of things that Einstein never did as well. So, yeah, so it's taking elements from real characters, but then it's looking firmly at this group of intellectuals, really, that are all trying to find a way to stop the world from eating itself up in a nuclear atomic warfare really on every level and essentially black side is trying to figure out why his friend's life is being threatened and why people are trying to find him the fourth book in the series is called black sad a silent hell and this one starts off with our main character john black sad being in new orleans and this is, I would say this is probably my favourite one. With a close second of this, to be honest, uh, because this story is great. And it's just fantastic to see this backdrop of uh, New Orleans with Mardi Gras and with voodoo and with uh, music being at the centre and jazz music being at the centre. It's a great story on every level. It starts off with Black Sad being hired by a wealthy music producer to track down one of his wayward artists who's addicted
addicted to heroin and so you get into a real deep story that you never truly see coming at all and it's yeah it's really an exceptionally well story really and that's the one thing i love about black side it always stop, starts off with this simple premise of you know finding a murderer or finding a lost person but then it ends up going into so many different directions and the culmination of it is never a plot do you necessarily see coming ever which is the perfect thing for a book a crime noir book and a crime story to do in any crime film is to give you a premise that pulls you in but then equally shows you something and a culmination that you weren't expecting and the art and the colouring in this is out of this world. I mean, if you look at a page where he's sitting down and having a meal with the son of the record label artist, they're having a son beneath a tree and the lighting of the leaves and the shadow on the leaves on the characters and on the scene is just a touch of genius, really. It's a stroke of absolute genius. And the amount of work and effort that must have gone into this is astounding. But the effect it gives is so amazing and impactful, I think. The final one is Amarillo, Black Sad Amarillo. And this is, this is definitely my second favourite, a close second favourite to Silent Hell. And why I like this is it definitely diverts from the standard format of a Black Sad story. This starts off with Black Sad coming from New Orleans in the airport so it's a direct continuation of A Silent Hell and most of them are direct continuations even though you can quite easily I would say pick any of them up and read them in any order but there's certainly a through story and a narrative that you get if you read it from the very beginning. But either way, John Blackside is in the airport in in New Orleans and he hasn't got any money to find his way home. And so he basically leaves the airport, runs into a guy who needs to take a flight but needs to get his car back home. So he meets Blackside and Blackside takes a small paying job of getting this guy's car back to home. Separate to this, there's a creative pay of poets and authors that are making their way through the country and travelling and going to see their... Uh, literary agents in Amarillo and they're down on their luck and haven't got much money so they eventually break down and as they break down they come into contact with Black Sad and they steal his car and then the whole story then is revolving around Black Sad trying to track down these guys who stole his car but it goes in so many different directions people die it ends up in the circus black sad gets accused of uh, being a murderer and yeah it goes in so many different directions and it is a glorious story really black sad is well worth anyone's time the artistry alone demands your attention, I think, but the writing is exceptional as well. And these three books are fairly cheap to get. I mean, you can still get this three-story hardback in Britain at least for about 14 or 15 pound, and then about nine pound each or or 10 pound for these other two. If you wanted the complete collection in paperback form, that is out as well, published by Dark Horse. Uh, but there is another one coming out uh, next year, which probably means the translation and Dark Horse publication will be out maybe towards the end of next year or early 2023, depending on when they finish it. But either way, it is an exceptional story, I think. If you like crime fiction, if you like good artistry and good storytelling and a fun easy straightforward read then black sad is definitely one that should be on your radar i think but thank you very much for watching and i will catch you on the next one